So this is this sort of a sub a sequel video to another one where I explain or I define equivalence relation as a reflexive symmetric and transitive relation, and I explain how that's the same as saying equivalence relation as partition. Now I just need want to clarify a little bit about what I mean by the same. So in mathematics, there, there's sort of a very formal way when you say an equivalence relation, is it a set, is it a subset, is it a superset, whatever. But there's a more informal way of thinking, which says what kind of structural information is contained in an equivalence relation. So one way of thinking of an equivalence relation is you have this set. So this, this thing, if you have a set S and you have a subset R of S cross S, just being a subset of S crosses makes it a set of equivalent of no, no, relation. A relation. Mm -hmm. And then if it satisfies these three conditions, reflexive, symmetric, transitive, then that makes it an equivalence relation. However, there are other ways of storing the same information without actually having a relation. That is the same information which you can translate back and forth can be stored in a different format. It's like saying there's that, that, that you can code this information in one language, which is the language of relations. You can code it in another language, which is the language of partitions. So what this is saying is basically you partition S as a disjoint union of Well, I should say non-empty because empty subsets you can just throw away as a disjoint union of non-empty subsets. So by disjoint union, I mean that it's a union. No two pieces intersect each other and each one is non-empty. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I mean by saying that these are equivalent? What I mean is that if I give you anything, any reflexive symmetric transitive relation on a set, then I can use that to get a partition in a unique way. And if I start with any partition, I can use that to get a reflexive symmetric transitive relation in a unique way. And if I go like this and then back, or if I go like this and then back, both two-way composites are identities. That is, if I start with a relation, I take the corresponding partition, and then I look at the relation induced by that partition, I should get back the, the what? The original equivalence relation. On the other hand, if I start with a partition of a set, I then consider the relation induced by the partition, and then I consider the partition that arises from that relation, I should get back the original partition. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I can sort of go, go like that, and like that, and either way, either of these two-way composites should get me back exactly where I started. Okay. Quickly remind me how you go from here to here. If I have a equivalence relation as a relation, how do you con construct it as a partition? You take an element and... Take the equivalence, the equivalence class, class of that element. Which is just all the things related to that. Mm -hmm. And then you show that this sort of thinking of equivalence classes, these equivalence classes form a partition. Mm -hmm. The reason being that no two equivalence classes intersect each other yeah. or other any two equivalence classes, they're either exactly the same or they're disjoint, and so that gives you a partition. And you end up using all three of these things in the proof. Now, if you start with a partition, how do you use that to construct an equivalence relation? So, partition looks something like you have your set, you have your pieces, and how do you use this partition to construct an equivalence relation? You take one subset and apply all those rules. Uh so how, why are two elements said to be related? In this whole set, mm -hmm. to define a relation, I need to specify when two elements of the set are related. What's my rule going to be? Yeah? I'm not sure. Well, I, I, I want my rule such that if I then consider the partition, I get exactly this. So what should the rule be? If your two elements are in the same piece, then? And then the reverse of them in the same piece. No, no, no. So what I'm saying is, I, I'm given this partition. I don't know what the original relation was. Mm -hmm. How will I sort of figure out what the original relation was? How will I, so, so if I give you two elements which are in the same piece of the partition, should I consider them to be related? 
Yeah. Yeah. If I give you two elements which are in different pieces, should I consider them to be related? No. No. So that's how, if I'm given the partition, I can reconstruct the entire equivalence relation. So what am what what am I saying? I'm saying that that given the partition, I can figure out what the equivalence relation was. So I'm I'm saying that's the way I go from here. A little while back, I just sort of or rather we just described how you go from here to here, okay. right? Using equivalence. Relation. Now I'm saying if I give you the partition, how do you reconstruct the original equivalence relation? Now that we've got the things both ways, what do we need to check to show that there's actually an sort of that these descriptions are essentially structurally the same give the same information what we need to check well these two things what we need to check they go both ways well they go both ways what you need to check is when you go forward and backward you you what so if you start with an equivalence relation okay you can use the equivalence classes and construct a partition of the set. Now, now you start with this partition and you use this thing of, uh, you use this rule to get an equivalence relation. What do you need to check? Oh, you want to check the three properties of equivalence. No, no, no. You, well, you do want to check that too. That, that's something you should have done earlier. But, but, but you, what do you want to check? You started with a particular equivalence relation. You, you got a particular partition of the set. Then you move back and got an equivalence relation. What do you need to check? Now, sure. Well, you need to check that the new equivalence relation you got is the same as the original one you started with. Right? You're going like that and then back. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think I understand what you're asking for. Okay. So, so, okay. What I'm saying is you can describe equivalence relations as reflexive symmetric transitive relations. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can also consider partitions of sets. What I would like to claim is that these, that these two descriptions actually describe the same type of information. So if I'm given information in this form, I can translate it to this form and mm -hmm. backward. There may be an analogy with language would help you. So, so suppose uh, I have something in two languages. Okay. Uh, let's say what? French and German. Okay. So I have some passage in French, okay, and I have some, and and now, or rather, I have I have a translator, I have a translation machine, okay. It can translate from French to German, and it can translate from German to French, okay. Or rather, I have two translation machines. This is French. This is the F two G translation machine, and this is the G two F translation machine. Okay. Now the first thing I want to check is that both the translation machines are sort of they they give you some answer, right? If I if I put a French thing in French uh, sentence in, I should get out a German sentence, and if I put a German sentence in, and I, I should get a French sentence out. Okay. So is that's the first thing you want to check. But then this next thing you're curious about is suppose I start with a French sentence, I do the F to G, and then I do the G to F. Okay, what, what would you like? What would you like to check when you go back and forth? What What do you want to check? If like if we go from F to G and then we go back, if we get the same French back. Yeah, if you get the same French sentence back. Mm -hmm. If that's true, then that means that this translation back and forth is not messing up the meaning of the sentence, mm -hmm. right? Similarly. You want to check something like this on the German side, right? If you start with the German sentence, go to French, and then come back to German, do you get back the same sentence? Okay. If, if, if both of these things are true, then you can say maybe this translation is preserving the underlying meaning of what the sentence is trying to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now come back here. Can you now explain what, what we are doing here? Okay. I think you just, uh, you, you wanted to tell me that Given the information of the equivalence relation in this language, in the language of relations, we will be able to obtain the partition. 
Yeah. So that's just saying we have a translation machine which calls from here to here. Yeah. And the translation machine is take the equivalence classes of elements. Right? Yeah. And then, and then you also have a translation machine the other way around which just says given a partition two elements are related if they're in the same piece and not related if they are in mm -hmm. different pieces. Mm -hmm. So we have these translation machines. Now the first thing to check is that each translation machine actually works. That is it doesn't it sort of gives valid outputs, right? If you start with any equal any relation of this form, then you get a partition. If you start with any partition, you get a relation and it's of this form. But what's the next thing you want to check? Uh, the same thing if we get the same equivalence relation back, if we go to partition and then come back. Yes, exactly. Right? So, so if you translate and then translate back, then, then whether you get the same design. And you want to check that on both hands. You want to check from here if you go like, like that, and you want to check from here if you go like that. In both cases, whether you get the same thing. Actually, existing language translators often don't satisfy this condition. Mm -hmm. That, that's why, that's the source of a lot of amusing, uh, things about you probably seeing Google Translate, people make fun of it because sometimes you do these things and they don't come back, right? Yeah, no, well, I think people love it because it's not translated the right way in the first place. Now about Yeah, but, but like, <laughs> even if you don't, like, even if you don't know a language, you can still get a laugh out of start, like you start, but if you know French and don't know German, you can still get a laugh. You start with something in French, ask to translate to German and then translate back, and then you get something totally different in French. So that way, even if you don't know German, okay. you can laugh at the translator. But we shouldn't laugh at them. I have like 1,000 ways to laugh at the translator. Okay. So I love them. <laughs> okay. So, good. So, so, so now I want to think of the equivalence relation in yet another way. And uh, this is not quite, I mean, this is a little more subtle. So, what I, what I really want to say is the following. Let's say I have the set S. Okay, let's so set S and make it bigger. Okay. Suppose I have a function, any function f from are we here? Yeah. From S to another set. Now for every point in here, there is an inverse image of the point. The the all the things in the original set which map to the thing. To the, to this point, but it need not be a single point because of, I'm not told that the function is one to one, right? So it could be a subset. These inverse images are called fibers. So the fibers are just the inverse images of points mm -hmm. under the function. Now what I'm claiming is that the fibers of any function form an equivalence relation. Or rather form a partition of the original set. Do you see that? So those little chunk are, are images of the... Inverse images. So, so this just means all the... So, so for every point here, so some points aren't even in the range of the function. So you ignore those. For every point which is in the range, the set of, of points in on this side which map to that form a fiber, the inverse image. And, and what? Then where is your f to the directions to the right? Uh, no, f is going this way. Okay. For every point here, I'm looking at all the elements in the domain which map to that point. We'll do an example in the next video. Okay, but we'll do lots of examples soon. Okay. But 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 the idea is to, so. For instance, if you have like the function x square, then the inverse image of four is a two point set two comma minus two. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got it. So, so what I'm saying is the fibers are actually, they form a partition of the set. Do you see that? No. Well, can any, will everything be in some fiber? Yeah. Because it has some image, right? Yeah. Will any two, fi can two fibers intersect? Mm. No, because mm. it's a function. It's a function. So if, if two fibers intersect, that means the point in the intersection is mapping to two different things, right? That's mm -hmm. not possible. So that's, that's why it's, it's a partition, right? Okay. So everything's covered and, and all the pieces are disjoint. Okay, it's a partition. Is there a relation? Equivalence classes? Are they equivalence? Well, you know, any partition, you can construct from that an equivalence relation, right? What will the rule be? Two elements are related if they are in the same piece uh -huh. and not related if they are in different pieces. Okay. So which means two elements are related if and only if, what? Their f values are? Same. Same. Mm -hmm. 
okay and two elements are not related if their f value if the function values are different the function value sort of tests equivalence Okay, so what's the equivalence relation in this case? Well, in this case is, is what I'm saying. So, so, so we say that uh, like a r b is if and only if f of a is equal to f of b. Right, that's the relation. So two elements are related if and only if their function values are equal. Right, that's what it means to be in the same piece. So, so now that this, this arrow is still need, these, these equal, this thing still need to be explained because it's not, you can definitely have different functions which induce the same equivalence relation or which induce the same partition. But in some sense, there's some, an essential aspect to this function. So if I have two different functions, if I have another function g and it induces the same equivalence relation, then f and g are in some vague sense, they are the same function. That's not quite accurate, but, but in some sense, the, what, what they're saying is that the, that knowing the equivalence relation tells you what the function should be that works. So these, so what, what I've really done is I've just explained these arrows this way, right? What I'm saying is there are also more tentatively, there are arrows like this, which, which can be used given a partition, you can define the function, given a relation, you can define the function, but you have to be a little more careful. It's not, it's not so, unique or clear. Okay, but the upshot is that given any function, I can define an equivalence relation from that just by saying two elements are related if the function values are equal. Okay, 